Well, you have to be a tough guy to be a defensive lineman in the National Football League, but one former NFL player is taking the term tough guy uh, to a whole new level. Derek Wolf, who played nine seasons in the league and helped the Denver Broncos win a Super Bowl, retired in 2021. Now he's an avid hunter. So when some friends called to tell him they needed his help tracking a predator that was killing neighborhood dogs and cats in his Colorado neighborhood, he answered the call in a big way. You can see it on your screen. Derek Wolf is with us now. Uh, Derek, thanks so much for coming on. Incredible story here. The picture kind of shows us the end result, but if you could walk us through it, how did you actually track down this mountain lion and, and get it under control? Yeah, so um, it wasn't like we had targeted this cat, this specific cat. It was an area that had uh, an abundance of, uh, of mountain lions. And not far down the road, there, you know, last year an eight-year-old kid was uh, was attacked, um, and then there was a couple dogs that had been killed in the couple years leading up to that. And um, then we, after my buddy called me, they made a fresh snow, and he said, "Hey, you want to come up here and and uh, try to? It's called cutting tracks, and that's when you get the hounds. So you get you you're, in the Colorado, it's legal to use dogs um, to track these cats, which it's almost impossible to do without them. Um, and it's also great for the conservation because then, then you get them treed and you can determine whether it's a male and um, if it's a, if it's a lion that's worth just chasing off or it's one that is ready to go. Um, and it's great for the conservation of these animals and then the population is um, thriving here in Colorado at least. Uh, North America totally is thriving um, with mountain lions. So this was a totally legal hunt. Everything I did everything by the book. Um, but basically what happened was, you know, we had a fresh snow and he said, Hey, you want to come hunt some lions? I said, let's do it. You know? Mm -hmm. So I grabbed my bow, jumped in the truck and we went up, you know, we headed up there and, and, and uh, we found the tracks we found, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no I was, was going to jump in just to say, Derek, because you, you were saying it's a great thing for the conservation. Um, and you talked about it happening there in Colorado. You obviously know it's for some people, it wasn't such a great thing on social media, right? There's a lot of pushback. Um, especially after the photo uh, coming under fire on social media. Um, some pra obviously praising your bravery, but some criticizing you online. Um, it's a mixed bag f f for this. Talk to me about some of the backlash that you've received. Yeah, you know, most of the backlash comes from, you know, there's not, they're not rationally thinking here. It's coming from an emotional side of it. Yeah, and I understand, you know, I love animals as well. Um, that's why I, I feel it's part of my duty as a hunter. I love hunting deer and elk. Um, so I think that predator control is an important part of that. And, um, you know, if we're going to, the North American model for conservation is the, is the gold standard. So everything that we do here in North America is, is based on science and biologists have come up with all these different numbers. And, um, you know, like I said, I'm not a scientist or any of that. I'm just a, an ex football player that loves to hunt. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do. And, now it's kind of taken on this new role yeah. to where I feel like I feel like it's my uh, my duty almost to try to bring us hunter as hunters to bring us together and help fight, you know, these different organizations that are trying to just destroy our way of life. Mm. And they want to, you know, and just in Oregon alone, they're trying to outlaw hunting and fishing, trying to make it completely illegal. Wow. Uh, well, so it's there's an attack. For yeah, sure. you're following following the guidelines, uh, following the tracks. In this case, catching up to a 195 pound mountain lion, taking care of it. Uh, and this was again, it all stemmed back to concerns over neighborhood safety, right? Concerns about the the well being of neighborhood pets and dogs and cats, which of course everyone loves, and you want to keep them safe. What's been the response from your your community, not just the online trolls? Yeah, and it, like I said, this was this wasn't my actual neighborhood where I live, mm -hmm. but I do live 45 minutes from there, and then I have a cabin that's not far from there as well. So it, you know, this is to me, it's a big problem. You know, just in uh, Boulder alone last year, there was a a mountain lion that I was that was actually because uh, a lot of people, sorry, but a lot of people were saying, hey, why don't you just relocate the cat? Well, they tried that in Boulder, and when they relocated that cat in Boulder out to the Netherland area, it ended up in 30 days killing 15 pets. Wow. So, and then the CPW had to come in there and um, eventually expire the cat. Yeah. So it, it's almost like you're doing it a disservice, um, you know, by, you know, this is a fully mature male lion that eventually is going to start eating kittens and hurt the population of lions. So it, to me, I just, I, it's a necessary evil that you have to do. And I don't see it as evil. I see it as it's a, it's a good time. I love doing it. Um, 
<laughs> I, it, there's nothing wrong with it. It just blows my mind that people are so, you know, up in arms about it. You know, I did it everything legal. The dogs to are the are like if you don't have dogs, I don't know how you could do it. And I was half dead on that mountain. I'm not gonna lie. I was full body cramps. Yeah. Um, we we were going up 2,000 feet, back down the other side, up and over again, and then finally at 9,600 feet altitude is where we uh, had that cat tree. And um, I, you know, I shot him with my bow, made a clean ethical shot. And um, yeah, so I'm going to take this opportunity to try to unite us as hunters, you know, try to try to come together, you know, instead of the, there's a lot of infighting in this, in the hunting industry. Sure. Um, you know, everybody's kind of competing, yeah. you know, for all the, for the attention. So it's like, well, why don't we just come together for one, one common cause here? Yeah, no, no, no wrongdoing found on your part, obviously, according to Colorado and, and, and laws. Laws are different in each and every state, in different communities even. Uh, we appreciate you sharing your story. I know there's a mixed bag of reviews on that, but either way, Derek uh, Wolf uh, joining us live with his picture. That last question, really quickly, we got to go, but w what did you do with the, with the lion? What happens after it's killed? I eat him. All right. Plain and simple. <laughs> Plain and simple. Uh, any special way to prepare it? Uh, yeah, we made breakfast sausages out of it, um, snack sticks, like uh, beef jerky snack sticks. Uh, it's it, People really, it sounds crazy to eat a mountain lion, right? Because uh, it's a feline, but it's actually a very sweet meat, tastes a lot like pork. Um, my three-year-old daughter loves it, so it's it's a good meat, man. I love it. Oh, 195 pounds of it. Enjoy. <laughs> Derek, Derek Wolf joining us live. Good to see you, Derek. Thank you, thank you so much for sharing your story. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys.